Hey guys, John Luxa here, back with our blind playthrough of Hellblade, Senwa's Sacrifice. Let's just jump in. Dive in, whatever. Alright. So we have a new sword. Yay. So now we get to go back over there. And presumably solve the puzzle to open the door. Which will let us into there, and then maybe fight Hela. I know that... That doesn't make sense. Like, the voices didn't go anywhere. I, uh, not, not allowed to go this way. So was the epic music, like fighting the Sea of Corpses, was that like her overcoming, starting to overcome her psychoses? You know, the voices seem a little bit louder and maybe more, not more confident, but well, maybe. Kind of mocking, though. Yeah, I don't like these voices, to be honest. They're more... Uh, how to put it? They're more demanding. They're more telling her to do stuff, right? As opposed to the previous ones, which were more like, you know... I mean, they were very doubtful as well, right? They were negative. These are slightly less negative, I suppose. Uh, but also, the previous ones were less... Do this, do that. It was just like, she's not going to be able to do it. These are like, do you think she'll be able to figure it out? Oh, she's so clever, this and this and that. They're more sarcastic and stuff, but they're not necessarily against her they're like a little bit little bit less negative but they're like do this do that there's a door you can do it you can see come on Senua. go away i'm not listening yeah they're louder too And this is the bridge from that other place where Dillian fell or she fell. So why couldn't we go here before? It just wouldn't open. It looks like there's a seal or something. Uh, it looks like a picture of a sword on it. So it probably would have said like you need a sword or it just wouldn't have opened or something. I thought I saw those runes on it. 
So maybe I should have tried to do those, but you know. Achievement unlocked into the mountain. All right, let's get. Uh, that's the first of the missing ones. That looks like nine more. Ten. I will tell you of a great hero named Sigurd, son of Sigmund, no less. Born after his father's death, Sigurd is cared for by the dwarf Rain. But Rain does not love the boy. Instead, he plans to use him for his own ends. You see. Rain's father possessed a great treasure given to him by the gods. But Rain's brother, Fafner, killed his father and took the gold all for himself. Fafner hid the treasure out on a heath and could not leave it. And from the evil in his heart, he turned into a dark creature. A dragon. Is that where the thing of dragons hoarding gold came from? If so, that's really interesting. That's... I bet that is. I bet that's how that started. Because you don't hear about it from other mythologies. Nothing about dragons. It was the Norse. Like the dragon, like the, uh, Ouroboros, maybe the, the dragon, but that's not, that's the one that's eating its own tail. Um, there's one that's gnawing at the roots of the world tree, some kind of serpent. Um, and then that, like you hear about like Chinese dragons and stuff, but they don't really care so much for gold. Interesting. Really interesting. can't go back now yeah we got a new we got a new achievement into the mountain which is also pretty interesting because when i first started this up i had 10 10 achievements out of 14 um i thought it was interesting because before we got to this area we had gotten three maybe four Ooh, that's an interesting sound. But it just seems like they, like in this last area, they gave us like tons of achievements. They gave us one per shard. They gave us one for getting the shard. They gave us one for, or for getting the sword, getting through the corpse, the sea of corpses, and then one for opening the mountain. That's like seven. Like, so seven out of the 11 that we've got have been in this area alone. That's a lot. Kind of a pacing issue, I suppose, but, you know, whatevs. Aha, no way back once we go this way. Oh, and you can't even, let's go down there. I want to see what's over this other way. It looks like this bridge is busted. Yep, this one is busted. Can I click? No. I'm really glad she didn't just, like, launch herself into the abyss. So we've seen... Um... Kind of what led her to this, but we still aren't really certain what... Oh, that was a weird glitch thing. We're still not really sure what she's attempting to accomplish here. I mean, you know... Hey there. The rumor is she's trying to free her, the soul of... Maybe. Maybe free the soul of Dillian. We're not quite sure. Save his soul? That was, that was, that was how it started, right? Supposedly he was sacrificed, and now he's imprisoned or something here. And, uh, she's gonna try and free him. Just 
too late. You are here, Senua. It can smell your stink. Isn't Garm the sword's name? How would you say Dillion if you are too much of a coward to step into the shadow? They can't stop me. Then do it. I could have sworn when she pulled the sword it said like acquire Garm or something like that. So let's probably run. Yep. Stay in the light. The beast is stalking you from the shadows. Your sword is useless here. Okay. Uh, well, that's probably Hella's sigil. And that's where we came from. Looks like the door is closed. That's a closed door chained anyway and okay there's a torch which presumably is light which presumably makes us safe so let's try running that way uh or or not Okay. Well, no, it's a trick. Mother, you killed her. Don't fall for it. It's me, Senua. So loud. It's not her. So full of hate. Just want to help them. Tell me what to do. Your father wants them to go away. And he only hurts me to silence them. But he's gone now. They always come back. He says I will die if I go with them. They say you die when you're already dead. No, and they won't be with them. Stop! That's why they crawl through the walls. Don't listen Do you to them. see them? Do you see their faces? He's coming. Send you Ah. She, she took her own life to escape it. It's not. She can't remember when it started. When her mother lost her smile. Her eyes gazing past her towards a world she could not see. This is what happens if you reach for the underworld. He said. It was a lot to take in for a child. And the first time she felt the cold chill of fear. I don't talk much about her father, Zen Bell. I suppose I just didn't want to risk upsetting her. But it doesn't matter now, does it? So, let me just pause, just because I don't know if there's a time limit or anything. Um... It's it's interesting, right? We can look back at stuff like this and be like, oh, those silly people. They thought mental illness was people reaching for the underworld and possession by spirits and stuff like that, right? Those silly people. They don't know what we know about mental illness. What do we actually know? I'm serious. I'm I'm not trying to be like a shithead about it. I am being a shithead, but I'm not trying to be. It's I mean, we know so little. We know so little. We've we've got some antipsychotic medications maybe that help some of the time, but are probably you know, I thinking about it, I considered them kind of similar to chemotherapy. In the sense that if you have cancer, when you're doing the chemo, a lot of people are like, I wish I just let the cancer take me, right? Because 
to be fair, when they find the cancer in its early stages, it's not so bad. And the chemo is probably not as bad as the cancer in its final stages. But it's bad, right? I assume that's the same with the antipsychotic medications. It's bad. So bad that a lot of people, they take it, but they don't want to take it. It doesn't make them feel good. It just takes some of the pain away or substitutes the pain for another thing, kind of like the self-harm thing, right? Switching physical pain for mental pain. Um, it's, I don't think they were making that. I don't think they're making this point intentionally, but I feel they are making it right where we kind of look back at, at these primitive cultures and we don't know very much more than they do. I don't think I don't with all due respect to any psychologists out there. I don't think we know very much about the human psyche. I don't, there's so much bullshit out there as far as like psychology and stuff. And there's a lot of frauds and fakers and other stuff. I mean, honestly, I think to be blunt, I think an AI would be a better replacement for a lot of psychologists because there's certain methods that you could use. There's different ways of, of, interacting with patients and some are more i was gonna say more better uh presumably some are better than others with depending on that specific person's or patients or whatever you want to call them um character their personality right certain things work better than other things treating them a certain way depending on the personality works better with different things. Um, but I don't think most psychologists take that approach. I'm sure some do. Some do. I think most are like, well, this is my approach. This is how I do it. I mean, let's, let's be fair. Uh, surgery and stuff like that is is far more of a science in my mind or a hard science if you want to call it that than psychology and you can you can't even get them to wash their hands and do proper um you know antiseptic procedures right i mean so what hope do we have for psychology as a science? <sighs> right now, probably not much. When we get some AI, like, and it, this is going to sound crazy, right? Pun intended, I suppose. You take a sex robot, right? It doesn't have to be a sex robot. You could just a, a doll that looks like an actual person. Stick an AI in it and develop that AI to treat patients based on protocols. That way you don't have some stupid person, some stupid alleged doctor being like, well, you know, I'm trying to make my, I'm trying to do a research thing that I'm, I'm going to research, but I'm not going to tell the patients I'm, I'm using them as my research people, you know, and I'm going to research hugs or or the rebirthing thing. Oh, I think I think your problem is this and so if we simulate the the uh you being born which by the way killed people, you have psychologists that killed their patients, like literally killed them. Not like, oh, I gave you the wrong medication and interacted. It's like we're going to do this. I'm going to I'm going to suffocate you. And then uh, you tell me when to stop. Oh, you, you passed out and you're dead now. Whoops. Like not even doing surgery. This is like we're supposed to be talking, but you killed people because you're trying to push some stupid hypothesis or whatever. Sorry, I'm a big uh, 
I'm a huge supporter of standards in medicine, which seems like people just do whatever they want a lot of the time. Anyway, I mean, I think AI is a real, you know, you remove the human element aside from the creation of the thing, basically. Remove as much human element as you can, ironically, right? And my personal thought is that maybe you'll see some benefit. Um, aside from that, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's it's a good it's a good question. Like where you go from here, right? Um, because you have you have Senua, who has melt, mental illness. You have her mother who also has mental illness, and they're still separated. There's still... Senua sees her mother the way, quote-unquote, normal people see Senua and her mother. It's like... When the mind isn't... When the mind is functioning according to an unknown set of rules, you don't know what is going on. You know, but you know, it would be nice. It would be nice if we could improve mental health. You know, just pet your kitties, pet the kitties. That might help. By the way, uh, last last little side note, and then we'll and then we'll move on with the game. Um, it was one of the sales things that I was I was looking into, and it was um, sales is kind of a shitty profession, or it, it can be, it can be right. Um, but positivity and and attitude and and you know all that stuff is important regardless of what profession you're in. It's just I was I was approaching this from. The sales perspective at the time it was a sales book um and one of the recommendations was basically have someone or something that's always happy to see you when you get home so you know kids or spouse or pets assuming the kids and spouse are happy to see you you know, if the first thing they do is, you didn't do this, you didn't take the trash out in the morning. It's like, I need a minute. But you want someone that can support you emotionally. So, I mean, you know, my vote goes to animals because, what is it, one of, the, one of my coworkers, she's like, uh, you put your spouse and a dog in a trunk drive around for a few hours and when you open the trunk the dog will be happy to see you that's that's why it's you get my vote they get my vote the animals anyway let's move on with this that's that's the lesson is always have some kind of emotional support animals help people too sometimes people also sometimes anyway let's resume all right, so let's focus, and then presumably we have to go and find this, these things in here. So now... Yeah, that's not unexpected. You killed us. That's deep. Wait, it goes up and down? Let's try going up then. I'm just running because... You know, I'm kind of past the... Oh, crap. Oh, well, this is good. Well, we maybe have to relight it then. 
Okay, what is that? Oh, wait, we're in the... Okay, not there. Okay, what is this? Oh, we have... Okay, right on. Uh, all right. Where? Where is this? Oh, hey! It's the shadow! Wait, was I here before? Can I light these? Yes, I can. Was I here before? Um... Okay. Can I go here and relight the torch? Okay, that's where I came from, I think. Uh, we don't wanna... Oh, uh, what is this? No. No, perhaps... Not. I don't know. Anyway. Let's try going down. I think it was here, right? See, I thought there might be a time limit. I don't know if there actually is one. The beast has been here. Oh. Oh, that's no good. Hold up the torch. All right, well. Can you stick it through the bars? Okay, we're in the light. Do I have another torch? No, we're just gonna have to run again. Okay, it's showing me the rune, but I don't believe that it's... Oh, there's still two. Right. Okay. Presumably, we have to go to this one. Unfortunately, we cannot light torch or anything. Oh, crap. We have to, though, don't we? Ah. We have to go to the fire and then come back. Let's go. Now you're free to search indeed. Uh, alright. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't think we're in the right place yet. Ah, hang on. Oh no, it's not uh, showing up yet. There it is. Yep. Reminds her of the isolating, suffocating darkness that she lived through as a young girl. Imprisoned in her room at night, the faces in the dark coming through the walls. She once thought everyone could see them. I mean, that's what children say all the time, isn't it? That there are monsters in the dark. By the time she realized that only she could see them, her father, in that, could see the monster in her. One of my favorite quotes is that um, children are afraid of the dark, or, or something like that. Children are af afraid of monsters under the bed until they realize the monsters are inside of us. It's kind of fitting, I think. Anyway, we found a rune. Rian the Dwarf's sole desire is to possess this dragon's accursed treasure, and he uses Sigurd to reclaim it. He tells Sigurd the story of Fafnir's gold, and the good-hearted hero promises to slay the dragon if Rian would forge a strong sword for him. Sigurd remembers that his father once possessed a sword given to him by Odin, Odin broke the sword to bring about Sigmund's death, but Sigurd's mother still has the pieces. And so Rian reforges the famous sword. It's cursed though, right? Sigurd uses the sword first to avenge his father, and then he and Rian go in search of Fafnir. So where does this go? That looks like another hole. Um, oh, there is, but there's a rune up here. And we can't get down this way. Oh, that's cool. The dragon Fafnir is so large and deadly that it would be impossible to kill him face to face. But each day, Fafnir crawls across the heath to find water. So Sigurd digs a pit in the dragon's path and lies in wait in it. When Fafnir slithers overhead, Sigurd sinks his sword into the dragon up to the hilt. Sigurd leaps from the pit, and Fafnir sees his killer. He warns Sigurd that the treasure will lead to his death, as it led to the death of all who owned it. Sigurd replies that death comes to all men. And every man would want to be wealthy until that day. And he takes the treasure. I mean, that's a true statement. Okay, so we've gone both up and down this way. And... We came out of that one. And somehow... Do we fall down here? Is that what we do? No. I mean, we click, but nothing happens. So it's probably farther back. Okay, this is chained. I think that's where we were before. But here... Here we saw earlier, but we could... I mean, I chose the other direction, not this one. So forward or um yeah I don't know not that way yet
I see. Okay, well, let's try going this way then. Oh. I see. Got it. All right, so that loops back around, which means there's basically only one. Wait. That's where we were. And just because. So. Right. That's blood. Might. You never know. Ah, I s Wait. Well, I mean... Oh, he's got a torch. Maybe our torch. I'm trying to get up. Well, all right. Oh, sh come on. <sighs> from where? Oh, from here? Let's see if we can light all of them. Oh crap, okay, never mind. Remember your training. So the sword is just on the ground. Oh hey, oh crap. Okay. Oh, hey, we can... Okay, well... Torch, light the sconce, or or don't. Okay. Okay. See, I thought it was on the ground, but maybe not. Well. Maybe it is. Oh yeah, there it is. Do you feel it? The beast is crawling into your mind, searching for weakness. It found your mother and used her to trap you in here. Did you see her die? I don't remember. I was only five. 
They told me she escaped the darkness. That she's with the gods. But what if they lied? What if the darkness took her and trapped her here? I don't know, man. I don't have the answers. Oh, first... Well, where is it's just another trick. Might be another trick. It's a trap. The beast is coming. Oh, there it is. Uh, run. And the torch is out now. Oh, keep running. Keep. No. Go. Run. Parkour. Oh. Oh. Without his head, you will never bring his soul back. His fate is sealed. Now it can see you at your weakest. The time you suffered as a child at the hands of your father seemed no one pined for Dillian. Do you remember the darkness, Senua? The beast is bringing it back. Did you leave me? This darkness. It's spreading. Father's keeping me away from the others. Away from Tilly. I won't give up. To rot in here. I'm going to find Dilly. Is she in a hole? Like her father put her in a hole. That's kind of effed up. Well. Uh, well, we saw the save mark, so I guess we could stop here. It's a different, it's a different, uh, yeah. Well, that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I really do appreciate it. I understand, believe me. I've, uh, um, yeah. Plenty of, plenty of videos that I want to watch, but I just can't because of time constraints and other stuff. So I, I do understand if you are choosing to spend your time with me, I am super grateful. Um, yeah. What is your guys' unique positive moment for today? For me, it's, man, let me, um, do I want to find it real fast? Yes, let's try that. You can't see... Uh, uh, what was it? So there was a video I watched about the history of F-Zero on YouTube. Um, just... Uh, uh, nah, woo, yeah, look at all these. Uh, it's called What Happened to F-Zero by... No strings PRD. It's about 25 minutes and it's uh, just kind of goes over the history of F Zero and um, why they haven't made another one, basically. Which is, if you're curious, if you're a fan of F Zero as I am, um, it's. It's because Nintendo's big on innovation for the sake of innovation. They more or less, aside from their, you know, 
maybe aside from the Mario games, they don't really want to do... They believe in innovation, not iteration, right? So they don't want to make a game and then make the same game, but better. It's why Star Fox, they only made a new Star Fox because they had the Wii U controller with like the dual screen thing. And I never played it. I don't have a Wii U. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's why they made Star Fox because they're like, oh, well, all Star Fox is is basically it's a rail shooter, right? We don't want to. What can you add to that? We don't want to make a new one of those. Oh, but now we have a second screen that we can use so we can show a third person and then a cockpit view. So now we'll make a new Star Fox and F-Zero is basically the same. They're like, we've already made the same game. Why, why do we want to make another racing game? That's just the same unless you can use the Wii U controller and make a cockpit view or, or something, you know, it's, kind of crappy but it's an interesting video it's it's pretty good i would recommend it if you're if you're interested um but that's my unique positive moment hopefully your guys is just as good if not better hopefully better of course and i hope to see you guys next time until then guys take care